Do you want to use your hard-earned dividends to pay your bills now? I mean, in the end, that is the goal, right? In this video, we'll look at what you need to invest to earn enough dividends to make your monthly mortgage payment. We'll look at the different opportunities available to get there and how long each one will take. We're talking making bank and paying off your house in today's edition of Constant Cash Flow. Welcome to Constant Cash Flow. I'm Jonathan, and I talk about creating passive income to make your time and money actually work for you. Smash that like button, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any upcoming content. When you subscribe, also drop a comment saying, I subscribed. I give a shout out to random subscribers each week in my Sunday video. Now, let's get back into it. I usually provide a little more background information up front, but today, let's not waste any time and get right down to the numbers. Now, I could probably speed things up a little bit. Mortgage payments in the United States vary wildly depending on a few factors. Obviously, the type of house makes a huge difference. You could live here or here. And geographical location also makes a significant difference. You might be here. Or, if you want to make me really jealous, here. And you could have a 15 or a 30 year mortgage. So, what we're going to do is look at the average home payment in the United States for our study. According to Bankrate.com, the average monthly mortgage payment for a homeowner in the United States is $1,275 on a 30 year fixed mortgage. This comes from the most recent data available from the U.S. Census Bureau's American Housing Survey, and it includes your loan repayment, property taxes, and insurance. So, taking that information, let's dig right in. Ready? In each of our scenarios, we're going to use one more traditional dividend stock, Procter & Gamble, ticker symbol PG, one dividend ETF, the Swab U.S. Dividend Equity ETF, ticker symbol SCHD, and one higher performing dividend stock that I currently hold in my own portfolio, AbbVie Incorporated, ticker symbol ABBV. If you're interested in learning more about ETFs and whether or not they're a good fit for your investing strategy, take a look at my video from a few days ago comparing several popular dividend ETFs and the differences between ETFs and stocks. You can click on the link on the top right or at the end of this video. I'll also drop a link in the description down below. Now, there are several different ways to look at this. Let's assume in the first scenario that you have a large amount of cash ready to invest and you want to make a one-time deposit to get those coveted dividends. A lot of money. Using a forward projection based on the past 10 years historical performance of these investments, here are the results. With Procter & Gamble, we have a starting dividend yield of 2.42% which means we would need a one-time investment of $632,231.40 to achieve our monthly dividend income of $1,275 and pay our mortgage. SCHD has a starting dividend yield of 2.85%, meaning we would need that one-time investment of $536,842.11 to pay that pesky house payment. And finally, with ABBV, we have a starting dividend yield of 4.84%, which equates to a one-time investment of $316,115.70 needed to never have to worry about our mortgage payment again. Without a doubt, most people don't have up to $600,000 just hiding in the couch cushions. So our first scenario isn't entirely reasonable for the majority of people. <laughs> oh, who has that kind of money? It's much more realistic to invest a certain amount each month in order to achieve your investing goals, especially for newer, younger investors. So let's dial back our enthusiasm just a little bit and invest on a regular, recurring schedule and let the power of compounding interest take effect. Let's assume an initial investment today of $5,000 and a monthly recurring investment of $1,000. And since the last several years have seen historically high returns, we're going to assume that the rate of capital growth is not sustainable and choose a conservative 40% of the past year's performance. With Procter & Gamble, it takes us a total of 24 years to reach our $1,275 per month minimum requirement. We have a total portfolio value of $751,042.49 at the end of that time, 
earning us monthly dividends in the amount of $1,287.67, and we've invested a total amount of $293,000. When we make our simulation with SCHD, we see that it will take us 13 years to arrive at a point where our dividends are covering our monthly mortgage payment. We now have a total portfolio value of $340,997.40, earning us monthly dividends in the amount of $1,491.72, and we've invested a total amount of $161,000 of our hard-earned cash. And last but not least, let's review ABBV. It would require nine years of investing to achieve our goal. We've reached a total portfolio value of $220,009.37, earning us monthly dividends returning $1,407.76, and we've only invested $113,000. Nice. That definitely looks promising. I love that idea. <laughs> Sign me up. With consistent recurring investments, it's easy to see that compounding interest takes over and really causes an explosion of growth in our investing efforts. We're able to achieve the same results over time with a fraction of the total investment. And finally, let's take a look at what happens if we accelerate our investing to decrease the time needed to reach our target. We'll provide $10,000 as an initial investment and pump up the cash with another $2,000 per month. When we look at Dividend King Procter & Gamble, we now reach our target of $1,275 per month in 17 years, improving our previous time by seven years. We have a total portfolio value of $793,141.55 at the end of that time, earning us monthly dividends of $1,371.13. But we had to increase our total amount invested to $418,000 in order to get there. Our steady ETF choice, SCHD, improves its outlook by three years to 10 total years needed to say goodbye to out-of-pocket mortgage payments. We've achieved a portfolio value of $425,575.92, earning us monthly dividends of $1,516.77, and we've invested around $90,000 more to get there with a total investment of $250,000, which is still less than half of the one-time investment of $536,000 needed. Let's check in on our dividend growth stock, Abvi to see what kind of improvements we made by doubling up our initial and monthly investments. With these changes, we reach our goal of $1,275 or more per month in just seven years. We see that we have a portfolio value of $286,249.39, earning us monthly dividends, returning $1,517.43, and we've invested $178,000. Looking back at all the different options, we see that there's no single answer to our question of what it takes to earn enough from dividends to pay your mortgage each month with the income provided from those investments. We didn't even touch super high yield investments such as QYLD, which currently has an annual yield of 10.32%. If you were to make a one-time investment of $150,000, you could immediately see enough return to achieve your goals. Just understand that you are sacrificing long-term capital growth that just doesn't exist with these type of investments. What we do know is that by modeling these scenarios and deciding the time frame we need to hit our targets, we could do it with as little as $113,000 invested over nine years. And as a nice bonus, we doubled our investment at the same time. I work on Wall Street. Uh, not on Wall Street, but, you know, stocks. Dividend investing, if done wisely and with the proper commitment and focus, can clearly help you reach all of your financial goals. I hope this was entertaining and allowed you to look at dividend investing in a new and exciting way. As always, Please do your own research before making any investments to see if it's a good fit for you, your goals, and your personal risk tolerance. Now, keep an eye out for my next video coming out later this week that shows you how to live off your dividends faster. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought about today's video and what you'd like to see discussed in future videos. I want to make sure that I'm putting out content that you want to see, and I really value your input. I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel if this video helped you in any way. 
On the right, you can find more great videos to help you on your journey to constant cash flow. I hope you enjoyed today's information. See you next time.